Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Community Fortress. This one was sent in by Profile Name One, and it's the Fortress of Climax Works of the local site government, the Flag of Gears, and the civilization, the Boot of Good. Who wouldn't want to be hit by the Boot of Good? I just want to say, if you would like to send in a fortress for me to have a look at on this show, simply go over to my Discord and go to the DF Save Sharing Room, and then in like upload your save. You can either do it via the file sharing service of your choice, or via a direct upload to the Discord server. As for this fortress, this fortress was themed as the Engineer's Fortress, and was kind of designed as a idea of where uh, dwarves, or as a place where dwarves would come and share ideas and. Uh, Ex exchange knowledge. So there's quite an extensive library in this fort. It's also got a kind of a neat design on the surface, which isn't something I get to look at all that often. So let's just take a peek real quick. They've actually dammed off this river. And now I, there's several different ways one could do this. Um, you could take some pumps and build across and simply pump them away. You could pour lava on it. You could uh, be, do some fancy shenanigans by going underneath and then channeling it out so that the water flows off the map. But from what I can tell here, all that was done was that they probably waited for it to freeze because uh, I feel like this fort might be in a cold enough environment for that, and then they simply dug down. If not, I I'd be very curious to know exactly how they went about rerouting this water, because, you know, it's always kind of a, a fun question to be like, hmm, how did you do that? But, uh, regardless, I've got this rerouted river, so instead of it routing off the map here on the left, it routes over to here, over by the fortress. Now, it is used in several different layers, so let's let's get into it. So this is the kind of main entryway to the fort. We also do have this very epic kind of pyramid structure uh, made almost entirely, if not entirely, yes, entirely out of clear glass, uh, as well as a green glass structure for the greenhouse, which is very thematic and fitting, which also includes bees, um, which means I'm assuming that the hospital is constantly full of dwarves with bee stings, but, you know, it, it is it is the way of things. As we move up here, uh, you can see, once again, this is uh, kind of a constructed area, but if something is able to get on top, it could actually squeak through these and drop down, which wouldn't be that big of a deal if it's like, you know, a walking enemy, but if it's if it's something that can fly, that could be quite dangerous to uh, any of your little urists down here, so you gotta be a little bit careful with that. Just kind of my two cents there. But anyway, as for the main entryway itself, there's a little tower on top, and it kind of goes down these ramps, uh, and the water flows off that way. Uh, as for the main kind of entry area, there's this lovely little pool with these brass statues and the water dripping down through the bottom. Uh, some unfortunate sleeping buzzards down here, which will never wake up, and as well as some dwarves that are currently trading. Uh, population is 202. If we check the nobles menu, we can see that we do have the monarch and the deity and the mayor and a champion and all that jazz uh, kind of rolling around. And if we zoom out just ever so slightly, we can see there, there's a ramp on either side kind of going up as well as stairs going down. Uh, the ramps on either side uh, kind of spread around, and we get a very large pen pasture, which is full, filled with uh, giant red squirrels. I bet you those are like kind of a pain to keep uh, behaved and house trained. And then over here we got a very large meeting area. We have of course dining rooms and dining rooms and dining rooms and dining rooms uh, spread out for all the different dwarves. The big old kitchen in the middle which is lovely. Up to the top, we got two more dining rooms, as well as yet some more dining rooms, and as a guild hall, and yet another guild hall. Over here, uh, down on the bottom, we have temples galore, kind of spreading around, uh, just kind of showing all of the respect to the various deities that these uh, Eurists here worship. And then as we move down, uh, there is, of course, stairs going down. So right over here, we have a pasture for uh, bacon, as well as uh, some uh, another yet another set of guild halls over here. Although I'm not totally sure what these ones are for, as they're currently locked. So there's a guild hall here that it goes nowhere that is not accessible currently that is locked. So I'm not sure what's up with that, but there's something going on there. Uh, then we got stairs going down, kind of in all directions. We've got some power here, which is powering these water wheels, which is running all of these screw presses and millstones. Um, which actually lay, like, makes me wonder. It's like I, it's not like the, the millstones need power, so I'm assuming they're just having them there for convenience sake. Uh, or rather, not the millstones. The screw press presses don't need power. The millstones do. Uh, or rather, they don't necessarily, but the, they're better if they do. Then down here, we have a, a very busy room, uh, which is the Blanket of Defense, which is a engineer's guild hall. Uh, I'm assuming the main purpose of this fortress, considering uh, how many are in here on the copper walls and the beautiful statues that are lining the edges. Over here, we have uh, a base to, uh, I guess, flood the water out, um, and it kind of ends down at this bottom bit, which goes all the way down to here, which the more I look at it, it kind of just looks like, okay, so this is where you uh, 
uh, make stuff into obsidian if if I were to bet because this appears to be one large obsidian whoosh zone uh, which probably yep you bring the lava in drop the whole thing down by one and then the piston fires the lava up to the top which makes obsidian so you get a big old obsidian tower uh, very useful uh, if for some reason you you need a large amount of obsidian because this is full of water the water goes all the way up to here uh, it teleports the lava up to this layer and then you drop the water on top and then you get obsidian you go mine it out and you do it again very very efficient method of manufacturing obsidian in this here video game uh, and then as we go down a few layers over here you can see that there's various structures and stuff kind of around this is a, a barracks for the military as well as training spots for uh, bow dwarves or cross crossbow dwarves. I prefer the, the, the traditional crossbows. Um, and then down here in kind of this main area, we have, uh, you know, these libraries as well as all of these kind of statue zones over here. And uh, the main kind of central staircase, of course, cats littered about as, as they do. And then, uh, and some of you might remember that I've actually covered fortresses by profile name one before, and this is very much their signature bedroom style, uh, where they have this kind of central area up top that then goes down through these um, multiple layers all at once. This is what, one, two, three, four layers of sleeping space, which I, I, I don't know, it, it got some controversy the last time in the comment section. Some people were mortified by that design. It's efficient space-wise. I wouldn't ever do bedrooms like this, but hey, I mean, it works. It's just kind of a testament to say like, you know, it works and dwarves aren't bothered by it, so why should we be? Uh, we have some offices down here, and uh, then down here we uh, have uh, more offices. It's just kind of your little office district, it seems. Um, and then as we follow the stairwell down, uh, there's, um, you know, spaces for uh, misbehaviors. Uh, so people who misbehaves gets to go lives in here for a little bit and maybe not come out. Um, and then uh, as we go down here, there's more central stairs. We go through caverns. And then we get down to this kind of big old furnace and forge zone, as well as crafting spattered in between. Nice and efficient. Uh, as well as lots of stuff down below. Uh, as for magma, it is coming from uh, kind of up here in this upper zone right here. Uh, I'm assuming uh, they simply drain it down in from this piston uh, as it gets dropped in. Um, when not making obsidian, might as well fill up your, your forges. Um, then, of course, we can go a little further down, and there's this area that, gets, that can get filled up with lava as well from this side bit. Um, and I'm assuming uh, this is either for invading uh, entities. Yeah, it seems to be for invading entities from the caverns. So they come down uh, into here and uh, then it gets sealed up and then they simply dump lava on their head, which is kind of funny actually because some of the enemies that can come in from caverns, forgotten beasts and uh, trolls alike are actually kind of bugged right now where uh, they can't topple uh, buildings, even if they are technically toppleable. So in older versions of this game, this wouldn't work. As soon as you'd get a Forgotten Beast or um, some sort of bigger monster, they'd come over here and just break these. And especially if they're a flying critter, they'd fly up here and just break this out. Also, most Forgotten Beasts are immune to lava anyway, so this is probably more for cavern invaders. But still, I just thought that that was worth mentioning. Um, hopefully that bug gets fixed at some point and then everybody's forts will just spontaneously die. Uh, we're gonna go move down a little further, move down a little further, move down a little further, and then we get down to the lava down at the bottom where there's this area that got filled. Um, there's also this kind of setup over here for water, uh, down in the caverns. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what they're using this for, maybe just some advanced drainage or just like, you know, the, the base of this. I'm not sure what the water, the base of it's for, but, um... As for the rest of the setup, it is just a cool thing to see. And then there's a few other just tunnels down here, and that's pretty much the fortress. So this is Climax Works, a lovely dwarven capital. I think that my favorite portion of this fort is probably this entrance area. You know, just kind of this pen pasture overlapped with this library with 166 books in it. Um, you know, these kinds of training zones and uh, uh, all these, all the guild halls kind of scattered around. It just looks really nice. I'm a big fan of the kind of stairs from underneath back up and into the uh, bigger, fancier rooms. Um, also a real big fan of like, you know, just the different guild halls and uh, this kind of military zone over here. Just, it looks very nice. And the entry water feature is awesome. Um, combine that, of course, with the uh, very pretty uh, clear glass on the surface. So all I have to say to this fort is thank you very much once again to Profile Name One for sending in a second fort for me to have a look at on this show. And if 
once again, you out there in the audience would like to send in a fort for me to have a look at on this show, simply jump over onto my Discord. Link is down in the description and go to the DF Save sharing room. And if you would like to support this channel directly, you could buy a mug over on my merch store or uh, check out my Patreon or one of my streams over at twitch.tv slash B-L-I-N-D-I-R-L. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.